Oh my god. SpaceX recently saw complete success with their Starship SN8 prototype. Well, almost complete. I built a small-scale RC model that operates on the same principles. It uses electric motors for propulsion and gimbals them for control. I chose not to use rocket motors because they're very expensive and difficult to test over long-duration flights. I'm not quite interested in how the thrust is generated, just that there is some thrust to let me fly. In the free fall or belly flop maneuver, my Starship flies almost identically to the real one by shutting off the engines and actuating the control surfaces. You can check out my previous video in the description for more information on how I built this and some of the engineering challenges I overcame. This video will focus on some more flight testing. I'm going to start the run cam and I'm okay. going to start the thing and we're going to go for flight one. Run cam's going. All right, here we go. Oh my God. After I fixed the Starship from the last video's crash, I changed some of the controller gains to try to improve the performance, but those oscillations show that they were a bit too high. There is no way it's gonna land on its own. <laughs> so I got um, some bigger control surfaces. Um, they're not exactly scale like these, so they're a little bit bigger, but um, I'm gonna swap them out really quick. These just pull out and go in like that. And uh, we'll see if we can get a slower skydive for this next flight. Oh, shut up. So because of those oscillations on the last flight, this time I'm trying to gain altitude much more slowly to keep everything under control. Okay, skydive. That was bad. I'm gonna bring it back. I did it. That's a first. <laughs> Ooh, we got an audience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Looking at the onboard footage after flying, I quickly realized that the control surfaces were stabilizing in the wrong direction on the roll axis. I must have plugged the servos in backwards when I fixed the Starship from the first crash. If you look closely at the flap on the left side, it deflects up when the Starship rolls to that side, whereas it should be deflecting down to create more drag on that side to lift it up. This explains some of the trouble I had in free fall during these flights and is most likely the reason for the spectacular crash at the end of this video. Stay tuned. Being all safe and all with your Lapo safe bags. It's your Christmas present. That's cute. Right, so I've got um, around the front here, I've got a uh, tiny little FPV camera and a DVR setup. So um, if I have this tuned a little better, probably not today, I would fly through the goggles. But um, for now, it's probably just going to be uh, just an, another camera, um, even though it's pretty low quality, but um, eventually I'd like to go FPV, so.
good enough. <laughs> Almost a second landing. I was just getting a little bit, uh, just getting a little bit confident. Um, yeah, so I think I need to tune it a little bit more. Definitely before I'll attempt at FPV. One thing I want to address is that this vehicle is not your conventional drone or multi-rotor. Typically, multi-rotors vary the throttle of each motor to generate control moments that roll, pitch, and yaw the vehicle. The Starship gimbals its engines at the bottom which changes the thrust vector so that it is no longer pointed through the center of mass. This creates a control moment that can roll and pitch the vehicle. This is actively stabilized using my own flight controller which measures the orientation and computes the required control deflections to track my pilot inputs. Without this, it'd be impossible to fly. Zoom in on my bullet connector. I, <laughs> I did zoom in. I don't have XT60s. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, everything's just a mess. They don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, I wish I brought my, my tablet so I could upload some different control games. Because this isn't, it, it needs some work. <laughs> I thought I, I was being me and I thought I did it right on the first try, but. Skydive. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that was probably uh that was probably my fault. I think I forgot the transition on time, but <laughs> hey, at least you got the crater in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well two two craters is better than none. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe one of the servos bound up. Oh yeah, that's that's no good. <laughs> There's a motor. Oh, good lord. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> Let me unplug the battery. Oh, lord. <sighs> oh, there, there's your problem. The motor fell off. Oh, really? That, no. Oh. <laughs> nope. This is literally a debris field. Oh, that, oh, well, that's the canard. Obviously, that's the canard. Um, this That's is like uh, NTSB, or like when they found the yeah. Titanic. Hmm, what, they, part, what part of the Titanic is this? <laughs> yeah, and they, they, they followed the, 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 the trail, and they finally like came upon the actual oh. craft. At least uh, no one was around to see that, Nick. <laughs> At least I can leave with my dignity intact. So it looks like I won't be flying this version again. I think I'll be shifting my focus from Starship toward the Super Heavy Booster now that we've demonstrated semi-successful flight with the Starship. I already have plenty of ideas in mind for how to make an arm to catch the booster on landing just like SpaceX plans to do. You can find more information in the description about my flight controller that you can use to fly crazy projects just like this, and there will also be a link to download the 3D printed part files for this project as well. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing or subscribing for future updates. Thanks. Ah, oh, well, that's good enough. <laughs>